82nd Airborne Division flew to New Mexico from North Carolina, dropping around 600 paratroopers in the second phase of a two-week-long network integration evaluation, a training exercise to test new equipment and how well different military divisions can work together. Jay Hayden, chief of the Systems to Systems branch at White Sands Missile Range, says about 200 troops from Fort Bliss acted as enemy forces on the ground. The objective of today's event was to capture and seize an airfield held by enemy forces. Once they seized the airfield, as you saw, some C-17s landed with additional equipment and troops. They will de defeat the enemy forces and secure the area so they can proceed south and to another objective in Fort Bliss. The rest of the seven phases will continue over a 10-day period at various locations at White Sands and Fort Bliss. Hayden says they keep the training exercises as realistic as possible. It's very realistic. The soldiers are, are given a mission set and they're given them uh, equipment to use and then it's up to them to determine how they're going to complete their mission set. And, and the same thing with the opposition forces. They are given a mission to, uh, to hinder or counterattack the, the, the soldiers. And again, they're not told how to do it. It's up to them to determine. So during these exercises and training events, uh, the Army gets to evaluate the training of the soldiers, the tactics that they use, the, uh, the way they uh, use the equipment, and the capabilities of the equipment. U.S. forces are not the only ones participating in the exercise. About 150 soldiers for the United Kingdom and Italy were also on hand. And up to 14 nations are expected to participate at different parts of the two-week exercise. Hayden says it's important to train with your allies in order to be able to fight together. It's always good to train together. That way we can uh, test our, our communications between our allied networks. Can we pass data? Can we talk to each other? And can we share information? Hayden says this type of training is meant to evaluate many different things. We're testing uh, the training tactics, concepts of uh, the soldiers and doing particular mission sets. We're also evaluating uh, new, new uh, systems and equipment that the Army either currently has in its inventory, that they are under development, or in some cases that industry has a brand new idea or concept to meet a, a, a war fighting challenge. Hayden says large-scale training exercises like this typically occur twice a year at White Sands Missile Range because of close military bases and the ability to provide lifelike situations. With our vast terrain and different types of terrain along with Fort Bliss and Holloman Air Force Base and our restricted airspace, it allows them over 100 miles north to south and about 40 miles east to west in order to perform th these types of training exercises, larger than any other uh, area within uh, the continental U.S. With over 1,000 troops participating in the exercise and close to 9,000 participating overall, this is the largest training exercise to ever be held at White Sands Missile Range. For KRWG, I'm Samantha Sonner.